This video is designed to help patients in Saskatchewan learn about the important things they need to know before and after a total joint replacement. The video lessons and steps outlined by the Saskatchewan Hip and Knee Pathway are designed to help patients through the process of the surgery and onto a healthy recovery. In this module, you will get an overview of total hip replacement surgery. Uh, the, the ideal candidate, whether it be hip surgery or knee surgery for joint replacement, is the patient who has really exhausted other measures of, uh, of therapy. It might be anti-inflammatory medications, it might be physiotherapy, it might be injection therapy, it might be uh, braces or walking aids, it might be weight reduction, it might be patient education. They've been through the full gamut. They have no further recourse other than to look at a joint replacement. A time when it's right for them to have a hip replacement is when their pain and their functional problems make uh, the risks of an operation and the period of time of recovery worthwhile. And I don't think you'll find any surgeon that ever tells a patient with arthritis you have to have a hip replacement. It's really the patient's choice and when, when their problems are enough that it, it warrants the small risks of an operation then that's the time to think about a hip replacement. Osteoarthritis attacks the cartilage that lines the inside of the joint and the ball. What happens is the cartilage thins, starts to flake off, and eventually you'll end up being bone on bone and then require a hip replacement. With a hip replacement, the most standard hip replacement uh, involves resection of this part of the femur right here through the femoral neck so that we're left with the shaft. We take the ball off. With the ball off, we then drill this part of the bone which is called the acetabulum and then we have reamers which are uh, used sequentially to increase the size of the acetabulum until we have good bleeding bone. Then a cup which is made of metal will be placed inside there to replace the articular surface. Once the cup's in then we place a plastic liner in the cup. Once this is done we then turn our attention to the femur. With the femoral component we then We've cut this ball off and then we place metal stems down here of sequential different sizes till we get to the size we want. And then the metal stem has a, bone, a ball rather attached to it that we be able to reduce that ball with the shaft into the acetabulum and allow pain-free range of motion. And then after that, it's just a question of physiotherapy for recovery. Standard recovery time is between three to four months. In this module, you will get an overview of pre-surgery exercises. So your book here shows the exercises that you should be doing before your surgery. And the first one we're gonna start with is this knee leg press, okay? Remember when you're doing these exercises, you should try to do three sets of 10 repetitions. So that'll be 30 exercises in total. However, you're gonna break those up into 10 little batches. The knee leg press, you're gonna take some kind of a belt or a band or anything like that. You're gonna hook it around your foot like this, okay? Then I want you to pull with the belt and your hands as you slide your foot up towards your, your um, buttock and as you're pushing out give yourself some resistance so you build some strength. Let's try that once more and give yourself some resistance. So the second one is your quads over the roll or straightening your knee okay so you can use an old coffee can, you can roll up some towels, or if you happen to have a roll like this, this will all work for this exercise. Put this roll underneath your knee, like that. Make sure you're in a comfortable position. If you need to put your head down, that's good. You're going to try to do three sets of 10 repetitions of exercises. So what you're gonna do here is you're just going to lift the bottom part of your leg up. 
and then back down. To make this exercise a little bit more so that you get a more strength in here, you can pull your toes forward, lift up hard, and think about pushing your knee into the roll. And then back down and back up again. Very good. So we're going to do this exercise now to help strengthen the back of your hamstring, the back of your leg, as well as do a little bit of hip strengthening for you. This exercise is called the standing hamstring in your book. So you're going to use a chair just for balance, just face the chair, hold on to it so you don't uh, tip forward or backwards. When you're doing this exercise, try to keep this hip as straight as you can. Don't let this bend at all, okay? Keep that straight, put your weight on the opposite hip over here and bring your heel up towards your buttock. Perfect, back down and do that again for me. Perfect. As you're doing that, it's not bad to just tighten your tummy a little bit, just to keep solid. And you're gonna repeat that 10 times. Very good. So this exercise is called standing abduction in your booklet, okay? So what we're gonna use this exercise for is to help strengthen the muscles on the side of your hip. So I'm gonna get you to stand with just your hand against that uh, chair just for balance. When you're doing this exercise, make sure you don't lean over at all as you're doing the exercise. Stay straight up and down. Okay, so the exercise is going to bring this leg out towards me that way. Perfect, and back down. And try that once more. Perfect. As you do that exercise, just tighten your tummy a little bit. Good. And now make sure that you don't rotate this hip. Don't turn that hip out that way as you're coming up, because you're not strengthening the muscles we want. So just keep it straight, keep your toes pointed straight ahead as you do that and come on back down. So this exercise in your booklet is called toe raises. Okay, this will be what you're doing before surgery to help strengthen your whole lower extremities, your legs, primarily your calves. So if I get you just to face the chair, you're gonna hold on to the chair to make sure you have a good balance there. When you're doing this exercise, make sure you don't lean forward into the chair at all, that you stand straight up and stay that way. The exercise is quite easy. All you're gonna do is push up onto your toes. Bring your heels off the ground and push onto your toes. Go on back down. You're gonna do 10 repetitions of that exercise. Hold for the count of five, go back down, do 10 repetitions. This exercise in your book is called the chair push-ups. This is an exercise that will help you strengthen your arms so that after surgery, when you're getting out of a chair up and down, it'll help you to push and it also help you to strengthen your legs a little bit and get those two um, activities in unison. What you're gonna do is just put your arms on the hands of the chair. You're gonna just push up as you're standing forward and now lean back down. As you push up out of the chair, you wanna hold that for five seconds and then lower yourself back down and repeat that 10 times. This exercise is called the sideways leg slide in your book. What we're gonna use this exercise for is to strengthen the sides of the muscles here. So the exercise is simple. You're just gonna gradually slide both legs apart as much as you can and then back. You don't have to take them way out. Just take them out so that you feel a little tension in there, then come back together. If you're doing this exercise and you find that the bed or the wherever you're doing it, the surface is too sticky and you don't slide well, then you can use something to make that surface less sticky, like a, a super slider, something like that. You just put that in underneath and now do the same exercise 
it'll be simpler to slide. In this module, you will get an overview of helpful tips to avoiding falls, how the multidisciplinary clinic helps you navigate the pathway, an introduction to the pre-admission clinic, and the necessary items and equipment a patient may need. Some general tips for your home to prevent falls would include getting rid of any clutter or any loose mats or rugs or any, anything else that might cause a trip or a fall. If you drop something, you're not able to bend down and pick it up as you did before, whether you had a hip or a knee surgery. You're going to have to have an alternative way of getting that item off the floor. It could be something important like the phone or your keys. So you're going to need your reacher. It's good to have night lights through your house and make sure that you leave some lights on so that you're not moving around in the dark. Have a hand railing on your stairs, but whether they're indoors or out, you want to have a hand railing. It's a lot safer. Use a cordless phone or a cell phone. It's a lot safer and that way if the phone is ringing, you're not going to be rushing off to try to get that phone that's attached to the wall. You can go to a private company and you can get a call system that you would wear as a wristband or a, a necklace. Use the emergency call system if you have one available in your house or in your apartment complex. Also to prevent falls, you might want to put a chair in your laundry room so that you can sit down while you do the laundry. You should bring your reacher in there as well. You could use the reacher to get down into the washer or dryer so that you don't have to do a bend or a twist. Um, have your coach look around your house as well and see if they have any suggestions on how it could be made safer. The multidisciplinary clinic is really a great system. Um, you're, you're seeing your doctor, you're seeing the surgeon, you're seeing physiotherapists, occupational therapists, nurses. You're getting the whole gamut of, of healthcare professionals providing you with the best care you can get. Through the multidisciplinary clinic, the patient is also aware of what we're going to do every day, so it's not a whole new thing. Um, with, the, with the multidisciplinary clinic and the patients becoming more involved and knowing what's going to happen while they're in the hospital, we've been able to alleviate some of that anxiety, but we've also been able to standardize care for nursing. An ADL suite is activities of daily living. So this is a room uh, where we have a kitchen set up, a functional kitchen set up uh, with a bedroom and a bathroom. So when I meet individuals in the multidisciplinary clinic, I can actually take them into the bathroom and we can practice using the tub transfer seat and the raised toilet seat. At least they can start using it before surgery so that it's in place by the time surgery comes around. In the pre-admission clinic uh, with your assessment, we ask you specific questions. So for example, we'll be asking you about your home environment. Do you have to be able to get up and down stairs? Will there be somebody there to help you? Within the few weeks before the surgery, they would come to the pre-admission clinic and there they would be seen by anesthesia and have x-rays and blood tests and ECG. And they might be seen by an internal medicine doctor if they have me other medical concerns to make sure that they're optimized for the surgery. How long will my stay be in the hospital? You can be in for three to five days. They do try to get you out in four and a half days. Through the hip and knee pathway, basically what we developed was a standardized process for every patient. So that we have a day zero, which is the day you have surgery, day one, day two, day three, and day four, you should be <coughs> discharged. The care plan is, uh, in the booklet, it's a pictorial representation of each day of your stay in the hospital and it is used as a guideline to make sure that patients are aware of what is going to be happening on a day-to-day -day basis and it's to make sure that the staff um, are progressing the patients in a timely fashion. So when you look at the care plan you will see that on day zero that is the surgical day so on that day mostly it will be bed rest, 
the nurses will start you with circulation exercises. Occasionally, uh, they may be helped to get up and go to the bathroom. Normally, on day one, we would start with physio. Uh, so ahead of time, that would be explained to them in the multidisciplinary clinic what physio is going to do with them that day, sort of what the goals are. That first day after surgery, we'll also get you sitting up on the edge of the bed. And possibly, if you're feeling fine, we may well help you to stand, and you'll start taking a few steps using a walking aid. Checking to make sure that all of the equipment that you require for when you go home is in place and they will start talking about discharge plans. We'll also start the exercises. So the second day is very much the similar plan. You'll continue with the exercises and mobility. The nurses will be helping you to sit up for meals, get up and go to the bathroom. Um, by the third day, some people by that day will be ready to go home. Um, they'll be practicing the stairs um, if it's required. Again, continue with the exercises and they'll be making sure that um, they have everything in place for when they go home. And then day four to five is basically a continuation planning for that discharge home. You know, we definitely have patient input into their pain control. Um, are we controlling your pain? Are we not controlling your pain? And we modify as we need to, right? And not every patient um, handles, handles anesthetic well. So of course, if a patient is very nauseated and having issues, you know, maybe physio isn't gonna work with them that morning. So yeah, we do have to modify things. So for individuals that are having the elective hip or knee surgeries, there is gonna be some equipment that we as a team would recommend. So the first piece of equipment is a tub transfer seat. So it has two legs in the tub, in the tub, two legs outside the tub. The legs are adjustable, so you can adjust the different heights. This is called a raised toilet seat. Um, for individuals that are having some difficulties getting off a toilet a lot of times, getting off a higher surface is easier. So this just goes onto the toilet and then make sure that it's screwed on for safety reasons. So when you get on and off the toilet, it just gives you a little bit of height. If you have a removable shower head, you can take that off the wall and get your back and your hair. Some bathrooms do have uh, grab bars in place. These are something that you can actually purchase and put in yourself, um, but they can just aid in helping you get in and out of the tub. The other piece of equipment is a long-handled reacher, and this is a wonderful piece of equipment that I recommend to everybody. Um, and it can aid in getting dressed and along with other activities with the, in the house. So if you drop something on the floor, you can use your long-handled reacher to pick it up. You're not gonna be able to put full weight onto that surgical leg, so we will order you a walker. So first off, you would start with a standard walker, so that's um, all four legs, and eventually progress up to a two-wheeled walker with a brake kit. Uh, you need to remember a good pair of walking shoes, loose-fitting clothing such as walking shorts, your toothbrush and toothpaste, your dentures, eyeglasses and hearing aids, a hairbrush, an electric razor if you're a man, and a walker without wheels. In this module, you will get an overview of the Saskatchewan Pre-Surgery Checklist, what a coach is and why it's important. This module also covers the important facts about pain control and anesthesia the day before and after the surgery. We really encourage a coach Right, so bring, bring someone with you that can help you out because of course you're not going to retain all the information that everyone's telling you. So if you have a family member or a spouse or whoever that's going to help care for you after surgery, going to drive you home, it's important that you bring those to the, these teaching moments. People need to be aware of what they're facing before and after surgery. The coach is very important. They are your main cheerleader for this whole process. They've been involved with your process um, pre-operatively, 
during your hospital stay and also when you go home. They will also be possibly the person driving you to follow up appointments with uh, your doctors, your physio appointments, that type of thing. So it's a, a major support person for the process and it really, really helps the individual, the patient, come through with their rehab much in a happier place. I think a coach can be very uh, important because they can either help prepare some meals or um, help do the grocery shopping, help to plan ahead uh, so that they, it makes it easier for the person that if their mobility is limited that they have someone there to help. It's very important to have your equipment ready. Ensure you've obtained your equipment that you'll need. Ensure that this equipment fits, particularly in the bathroom. And ensure that you've practiced using the equipment, such as the walker, the tub transfer seat, and a commode chair. You'll also want to use this time to ensure your home is ready and safe by installing railings on all sets of stairs, both inside and outside. You'll want to remove loose cords or throw rugs so you don't trip on them. Another thing you'll want to do is practice the exercises in the booklet you were given. This will get your leg familiar with those movements and you will gain confidence and experience in doing these exercises. You'll want to make sure that you understand the instructions you were given at the pre-assessment clinic by the doctor regarding your medications. Review your instructions. Make sure that you're uh, receiving adequate uh, servings of protein, which are found in the Meat and Alternatives group from Canada's Food Guide uh, every day. So you're aiming for three servings per day. Another food group that's also important that supplies protein as well as calcium is your milk and alternatives uh, food group. Uh, for that increased protein, you should be aiming for two to three servings per day. Planning and freezing meals before surgery is also important. It helps you to eat healthier once you get back home. Uh, some things to look for um, are meals that freeze easily in individual portion. Um, and also remembering to ask your grocery store about delivery services for groceries. Often that's available. Uh, nutrition plays a really critical role in, in, in the healing from any kind of surgery. We know that poor nutrition causes longer um, rates of healing. It can cause dehydration as well, uh, which is definitely going to hinder your recovery process. So we really need to make sure we're getting good balanced nutrition at this time. Skin preparation by showering twice before surgery is important to reduce the risk of infection by reducing the bacteria on your skin. Remember to shampoo your hair, trim your nails, and remove any nail polish. It is important to have an empty stomach before surgery by fasting because anesthesia can weaken the systems that keep food and drink safely in your stomach. Serious problems can arise if food or drink find their way out of the digestive system and into your lungs. Be sure that you have a bowel movement. If you suffer from constipation, take your usual laxative two days before surgery. An empty bowel before surgery helps avoid discomfort, constipation, and other problems. Now, if you develop a fever, infection, cold, flu, gastric symptoms like diarrhea before your surgery, please call your surgeon this may mean your surgery has to be rebooked. So when you come for surgery, it's important that you have your coach with you, um, that you have a ride to the hospital that morning, that you have arranged for someone to take you home when you are discharged after surgery. An intravenous will be started in one of your arms. You will be getting an antibiotic within an hour before your surgery just to prevent any chance of infection. You'll be taken to the operating room they will be doing a surgical safety checklist. You'll be given an anesthetic and then the surgery will begin. Uh, the two major options that are available are the general anesthetic, where they are totally asleep. They do have a breathing tube put down their throat after they're asleep. The anesthesiologist is with them at all times during the surgery and administers IV medications and narcotics to them before they're awake so that they wake up as comfortable as they can be when they are arriving in the recovery room. The other option is the regional anesthetic, or what many have heard called the spinal. Because essentially the spinal anesthetic numbs you from your upper belly down to your toes.
In this module, you will get an overview of post-surgery care, important breathing and circulation exercises, post-surgery exercises, and important hazards you can avoid. After the surgery, uh, when you first see your hip, there will be a dressing on the hip and quite a large bandage over it. The nurses, when you're on the ward, um, they will be checking the bandage daily. They will be changing it as required. So when you have your hip um, surgery done, we're going to be checking your dressing. We'll check your swelling and your circulation and we'll check the whole, your whole leg to make sure that leg is, is getting adequate circulation. One thing will be important, when we have you um, turning from side to side, we'll probably have a, a pillow in between your legs because we don't want you to cross your legs. We want to keep that, that hip in good alignment. We would want you to ask us to help, um, have, have help when you do turn from side to side. You may have oxygen tubing on when you come back from surgery. You may or may not have a catheter in your bladder. Um, this would be removed when you're more mobile and able to get up to the washroom. Your pain is also going to be monitored by nursing staff. Um, we will ask you to describe to us how your, what your pain level is on a scale of 0 to 10. And 0 will be no pain and 10 is the worst possible pain ever. It's important that you take your pain medication quite regularly as well because everything um, that you do as far as your therapy and your mobilization and your activity is dependent on making sure that you're as little pain as possible. You will rehab much better if you, we can control your pain. Some people will have staples and some people will have dissolvable stitches. People who have staples um, will be told to contact um, either their uh, local doctor or the nurse to have the staples removed, usually at about uh, anywhere from 10 to 14 days. The ward will provide you with really clear um, explanation and how to look after the incision um, when you go home. And rest and sleep is very important in your post-op period. It's important that you can limit your visitors to um, so that you can get your adequate rest. Um, after a hip surgery there may be some swelling um, in the lower leg. Often we do not see a lot of swelling um, after a total hip replacement but it's always important that if there is swelling in the leg that you elevate it. So that involves lying on the bed, resting the leg on about four or five pillows so that the knee and ankle um, are higher than the heart. And you want to stay in that position for about 15 to 20 minutes and do that as you need to throughout the day. So let's just review some of those exercises that, that you're so important that you do. So can you show me how you're going to do your foot pump exercises? Up and down with your feet, excellent. And how often do you think we're going to do those? What did we once ask every you to? Hour. That's very good. Pumping your ankle up and down at least 10 times and then tightening the muscles in the back of your knee. So kind of pushing your knee down into the bed and tightening the muscles in your bottom. So squeezing your bum together. And you want to make sure you're doing those every hour that you're awake. Um, at least 10 of, at every spot in the, the lower extremity. And that helps just to prevent blood clots in the leg. For the lungs, we work on deep breathing. So you want to make sure that every hour you're taking at least 10 deep breaths. So you're taking a deep breath in through your nose and then trying to take little sniffs on top of that to really fill up your lungs. And then to actually cough a couple times after you do that, just to maintain the health of your lungs. This is to ensure that you get lots of air into your lungs after your surgery because you won't be quite as mobile as you were before. So what we're gonna make sure you do is you get a good expansion of your chest here. So you're gonna try to breathe from here. Take a deep breath in, sniff. Hold that for three to five seconds and relax. Certain precautions for your hip following your surgery. One of them will be, do not bend your hip past 90 degrees. If you're sitting in a chair, do not reach forward to try and pick something up. We do not want to bend our hip past 90 degrees. If you're sitting in the chair, do not put your feet up on an ottoman or a stool because we don't want to bend our hips past 90 degrees. So further precautions for your hip following your surgery would be to not cross 
your legs. In sitting, do not cross your legs at the knee or do not cross your legs at the ankles. This can also be true in lying. Do not cross your legs one over the other as you're lying. So the precaution is to ensure that you do not cross your legs. In this module, you will get an overview of your post-surgery exercises. So this exercise is called the hip and knee bend. This is to increase the range of motion after your surgery. So what you're going to do is you're going to go um, firstly on your surgery side you're gonna slide your heel and your foot along the bed as you bend your knee and try to slide that up as far as you can towards your bum. Slide back out. And then back up. When you get up here, just hold that for about a count of five and then slide back out. If you're having trouble doing this exercise, you can get something slippery, put it under there, and slide up. Very important when you do this exercise to make sure your knee stays in line with your foot. So this exercise is to help strengthen the muscles in your leg it's similar to the exercise you did before surgery in straightening your knee. So we want to put the roll underneath and so that your knee goes over top. Now you're going to lift your lower leg up and as you do that, squeeze the muscle here. Lower it back down. To make the exercise a little better, as you're coming up, pull your toes forward, squeeze, hold about five seconds and then lower. This exercise is uh, called the sideways leg slide in the book. It's going to be used to strengthen the muscles on the side of your hips and also to give you some range of motion. So you're going to put your legs together. What you're going to do is keep your toes pointed to the roof as well as your knees and then just slide your legs apart. Come on back together. Slide them apart. As you get out there, Hold that for about five seconds and then come back together. And come back together. This exercise is going to help to improve some range of motion as well as help to strengthen the muscles in the front of your leg. In your book it's called knee straightening while sitting. What you're going to do is stay upright. You don't want to slouch. You're just going to straighten that knee straight out. Tighten your muscle, slowly let it go back down. As you straighten your knee, you can pull your toes up towards your hip and then relax. You're going to do that exercise. When you get to the top, hold for five seconds and then slowly put it back down. Slowly put it back down now. In this module, you will get an overview of what you need before you leave the hospital, what happens on the day of discharge, and a review of the Saskatchewan Hospital Discharge Checklist. 
Okay, so it's four days after your surgery. You've done extremely well. Um, usually we aim for th between three and five days that you're ready to go home and you fit right into our plan. Um, you were able to do several things that, that we wanted to make sure you could do before you went got home and that was to get yourself in and out of bed and in and out of the bathroom, mm -hmm. that you can walk short distances, um, that you can get yourself dressed and so those are important things that you need to be able to do before you can go home on your own. You will have appointments and follow up appointments with your surgeon. Usually we'll make that appointment before you go as well as it's a good idea to um, follow up with your family physician so that, that they know what's going on and, and how you made out from your surgery. The therapist will have given you all your exercises to do at home, so it's very important that you continue on with those exercises. Just monitor your incision site to make sure that it's staying normal. What you want to make note of is if there's increased redness or a drainage comes out um, of that incision or extreme swelling. Those kinds of things you need to watch for and let your surgeon or your doctor know about it. Make sure that you don't develop any pain in your chest or any pain in your legs. Okay, so everything that we've talked about about getting ready for going home, we have written that out on instruction sheet for you. So I will give you this discharge care plan and it has a lot of this information in writing so you can refer to it. It also has your appointments made for you and written out and then you can refer to this when you get home because often it's quite a bit of information information all at once and it's nice to have some in writing. We'll make sure all those arrangements are in place before you go and you've got your book that you can refer to when you get home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In this module, you will get an overview of activities at home. This chapter will include sitting up in bed, using a walker, bathing and using the toilet, around the house, and getting in and out of the car. Let me just give you a quick demonstration how you can roll safely onto your unoperated side. So first of all you'll place a pillow between your knees here and so in this case the left side is the operated side and the pillow prevents the hip from and the knee from dropping past that midline point. When you sit down on the bed you want to sit down as far as possible back onto the bed you can use your arms to help push yourself back into bed, into position. To get out of bed is just the reverse of getting in. So what you'll do is slide your operated leg towards the edge of the bed and then follow with your unoperated leg. Prop yourself up, pushing through your elbows and continue to slide your legs towards the edge of the bed, gently allowing your leg bend over the edge. I'm going to demonstrate getting from sitting to standing after you've had a knee or hip replacement. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to slide the leg that had the operation forward. 
Then you're going to slide your body forward on the surface that you're sitting on using your arms. So you push yourself forward so you're at the edge of the chair. You want to make sure your toes are under your knees. You're going to lean forward but not bending past 90 if you've had a hip replacement and push up with your arms from the surface you're sitting on into standing using the walker for support. So we're going to review walking with a walker. Now you don't want to move it too far ahead of you, so you want to make sure that the four legs hit the ground all at the same time. And then you'll first step your operated leg to meet the walker. And you want to put as much weight as you can through your arms and then meet that foot with your unoperated leg. Angle the walker towards the direction that you want to go and just turn with your full body so that you're not pivoting on the joints. So with walking with the walker, just making sure that all legs of the walker contact at the same time and putting as much weight through your hands as you can so that it takes the force away from the limb. This is called a raised toilet seat. Um, for individuals that are having some difficulties getting off a toilet, a lot of times getting off a higher surface is easier. So you can go out and purchase a raised toilet seat to make it easier to get off the toilet. So this just goes onto the toilet and then make sure that it's screwed on for safety reasons. So when you get on and off the toilet, it just gives you a little bit of height. To get up from the toilet, you have to scoot forward to the edge of the seat, slide your operated leg forward, and have your hands on the armrests. Push up, and when you have your balance, you can reach forward and grasp the walker. So when you're getting into the tub, you want to avoid the total hip precautions, which is no bending past 90, no twisting, and no crossing your legs. So getting into the tub, onto the seat, what I want you to do is you can sit down. Some people do put their leg out a little bit, because when you do that, that puts a greater angle into that hip. Then you sit down. I would suggest move your shoulders back. Pivot your bum around and then you can lift your legs over while still leaning back a little bit and then you can slide into the tub. If you have a removable shower head, you can take that off the wall and get your back and your hair. Some bathrooms do have uh, grab bars in place. These are something that you can actually purchase and put in yourself, um, but they can just aid in helping you get in and out of the tub. So to get out of the tub, slide your bum over, lift your legs over the side, Spin around and then you can get into standing. The other piece of equipment is a long handled reacher and this is a wonderful piece of equipment that I recommend to everybody um, and it can aid in getting dressed and along with other activities with the, in the house. So if you drop something on the floor you can use your long handled reacher to pick it up. You're not going to be able to put full weight onto that surgical leg so we will order you a walker. So first off you would start with a standard walker so that's um, all four legs and eventually progress up to a two wheeled walker with a brake kit. Um, dressing the lower half of your body will be difficult after surgery. You might need a long-handled reacher, a shoehorn, a sock aid, elastic shoelaces and a dressing stick, and especially if there's no one to help you. Always dress the operated side first. Use the reacher to grasp the waist of the pants and then pull up the pants over your toe. Once that side is on, you can put the other leg in however you need to. Once you have your pants up to your knees, you can bring the walker in front of you to help you with your balance while you pull up your pants. The rule is that you always dress the operated leg first and you always undress it last using the reacher. When you're putting on socks, you have to use a sock aid. And that's a cupped piece of plastic with long handles. You put the sock on it and then put it on the floor in front of your toe, making sure that you don't bend forward. Then you slide your toe inside the sock and then pull on the sock aid until it comes out of the sock and then you're placed properly on your foot. So when going upstairs, what you'll do is you'll place the unoperated first up on the step, leaving the cane 
down with your operated foot. You'll put as much weight as you can through your hand on the rail and through your hand on the cane to help to push yourself up and bring that operated foot up onto that step. Doing one step at a time is the safest when you're initially doing stairs and because you may not have that range of motion to be able to bring your foot up onto the next step. So let's try a couple more. First, the unoperated leg pushing through and bring the cane up with you. And again. And the cane along. Now when coming downstairs, you'll want to Keep your hand on the rail so you can switch sides with your hand that the cane is in. And when coming downstairs, what you'll do first is you'll bring your cane and the operated leg down first at the same time. Um, so for getting in and out of a car is the same idea as using that tub transfer seat. Uh, I would recommend that you back up into it and you sit down on the seat first and then swing your legs in and pivot your bum so that you're not putting full weight onto that surgical leg. 